Hi friends, good day. Today, let us try to understand about what is debt to equity ratio, how debt to equity ratio is calculated, and what do we understand about debt to equity ratio, and what is zero debt to equity ratio through this video. According to Joel Greenblatt, the secret of investing is to figure out the value of something and then pay a lot less. Please subscribe for more videos. Click the bell icon for updates. Debt to equity ratio. The debt to equity ratio is calculated by dividing a company's total liabilities by its shareholders' equity. It measures the relative contribution of the creditors and shareholders or owners in the capital invested in the business. It also indicates the relative proportion of shareholders' equity and debt used to finance a company's assets closely related to leveraging. This ratio is also known as risk gearing or leverage. This ratio is used as a standard for judging a company's financial position. The two components in calculating the formula are obtained from the company's balance sheet. It also measures the company's ability to repay its obligations. If the ratio is increasing, it means that the company is financed by the creditors rather from its own financial sources, which is a dangerous trend. Generally, the investors and the lenders prefer a low debt-to-equity ratio as their interests are better protected in the event of sudden business decline. So the companies with a high debt to equity ratio may not be able to attract more lending capital. The formula is debt to equity ratio is equal to total liabilities divided by total shareholders equity. The aspects that are required to calculate the ratio are debt. Debt means borrowing or the loan taken by the company. The details regarding the debts can be found in the balance sheet. It can be classified into two parts, short term and long term. Short term, these are the debts that have maturity period up to 12 months and these can be found under the current liabilities sections of the balance sheet. Long term, these debts also have maturity of more than 12 months. These debts are found under the non-current liability sections of the balance sheet. Adding the two above parts gives us the financial debt portion. Equity. There are three types of equity. These values can also be found in the balance sheet. Number one, share capital, otherwise equity capital. The amount that is raised during the IPO is the share capital. It can be calculated by multiplying the price of per share in the IPO multiplied by the number of shares issued. Number two, Reserves and surplus. The amount that is kept aside by the companies for the purpose of expansion and contingencies out of their profits after giving out dividends. It is a part of the equity shareholder money. Number three, warrants. These are the securities that give the holder the right but not obligation or compulsion to buy a certain number of securities at a certain price before a certain time. Adding all the above three gives us the equity amount in the formula. Both the variables are shown on the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. For example, let us assume a company XYZ has taken a debt of rupees 300 while the shareholder's equity is worth rupees 160, then the debt of equity ratio will be 300 divided by 160 is equal to 1.875. This means for every 1 rupee of equity, the company XYZ holds a debt of rupees 1.875. The debt to equity ratio in percentage for the company XYZ will be 187.5 percentage. Drawing interference from the ratio. The debt to equity ratio of the company XYZ is on a higher side, which means that the company is more aggressive towards the financial leveraging. Although the higher ratio indicates a higher risk in the form of debt, reaching a conclusion based 
only on this ratio is also not right. There are two possible conclusions from the higher ratio. Number one, it holds higher risk. If any problem occurs that leads to the bankruptcy when the company is unable to recover the debt, especially since the price of equity does not increase significantly, such a situation is bad and can lead us to trouble and can cause a hefty investment loss to the company. Number two, the other situation is that it indicates that there is a higher chance of significant growth with plans like expanding the company. Keeping this in mind, a higher leverage is favorable if you are expecting a good amount of profit in the future. Similarly, if the debt to equity ratio is low, it indicates that the company holds a lower risk and the chances of incurring a loss on your investment is lower. There is other scenario which indicates that the company is not actively involved in the process of expanding the business. So we cannot expect a significant profit or increase in the price of equity over a period of time. Well, it is important that we compare the debt to equity ratio of the companies within the same industry. It is difficult to compare across different industry groups where the ideal amounts of debt will vary. For example, we cannot compare the FMCG companies with the mobile network companies. We need to compare VI with similar company like Airtel. Let us compare the debt to equity ratio. For example, a company A has a debt equity ratio of 2.25 and a company B has a debt to equity ratio of 1.5. So in comparison, the debt to equity ratio of company B is looking good. Zero debt to equity ratio. Some companies even have a debt to equity ratio of zero. For example, two wheeler companies like Bajaj Auto, Hero Motor Corp, Asia Motors. This indicates that they do not have any debt and manage the companies on their equity and reserves and surplus smoothly. They don't have the pressure of the liabilities, which tells us that they are well managed. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and do share.